Hey, how's it going? And today I wanted to show you how to create this kind of animated sign and this is what it looks like. Come over here. It's super cool. It's 3D text and then it's animated. And of course we can slow that down and we can rotate this in any number of directions. And the crazy thing about it is it's so easy to do, it's not even funny. Like this is so easy. Now this is supposedly, the 3D text is supposedly still in beta, but honestly, I don't know, I think it's pretty stable. Anyway, I'll be back in just a minute to show you how to get started with it. Okay, so to get started with this, we're just going to go into the third person template. I'm in Unreal Engine 5.3, I just downloaded it the other day. I'm not going to save my prior project. I forgot that there was even 3D text in Unreal Engine, but it would be great for like titles, business names, things like that. You wouldn't want to use it everywhere, but it would be great for maybe the logo on a building or a brand name or something like that. It's like where it's just 2D render right there on third person template. You wouldn't need 3D text for something like that. So anyway, the first thing we got to do is got to go into plugins and we got to search for 3D text and it's right there and just go ahead and say yes and restart. And they say it's in beta, but it's been in beta for over a year now, so I'm not sure why they don't feel it's stable enough yet, but it seems pretty stable. Okay, great. So one of the things I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna kind of move down here, but I know that Unreal Engine moves fast because the camera moves fast because you're navigating big worlds, but but if you're in a small world, you really don't need the camera moving so fast. So I always turn the camera down a little bit. It moves a little too fast for me. And then I want to turn snapping off because it's irritating in this case. It's not very helpful. And then we're going to search for 3D text and just drag this onto our scene here. I had it blue. It's by default. It remembers how I had it set last. So I had made it blue. But here you can just put whatever you want to put. Like your... Oh, how about this? This space for rent. Always trying to make money, right? Okay, and then <laughs> extrude it out a little bit. I don't know how far you want to extrude it. Not too crazy far, but... And then there's a whole bunch of other cool things you can do. I'm not going to go into all those today. This alone is just pretty cool. I'm just looking at the shadow in relationship to the grid lines and trying to kind of see, like, where is the center of this particular thing right there so I'm just looking so maybe somewhere right in here between the space and the four is kind of the center that becomes an issue in a minute here so I'm gonna leave that right there now if I were to try to animate it it's gonna spin along this pivot point and for some reason I wasn't able to get the pivot point to reset so that's what causes this whole tutorial to come about so what we're going to do is, this is a workaround to that, and remember, I realize there's a ton of different ways to do this, so this is just my way of doing it. Now I'm just going to drag a cube onto the surface here. Now the beauty of the cube is that the pivot point is at the dead center of this cube, which is great. And I just did a tutorial not that long ago about a Minecraft game where you spawn blocks, and the blocks are spawned into the floor at the pivot point, so it looks like when I spawn a block, it's halfway out of the ground, that's because it's spawning at the pivot point, the origin essentially. That's kind of a drawback there, but here it's actually we can use the centered pivot point to our advantage, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So with the cube selected, we're just going to come over here and see that little tiny icon there that converts the actor to a blueprint, because we want to be able to reuse this functionality. We don't want to have to keep rebuilding this, so we don't want to build this in the level blueprint. So we'll go static mesh actor, and we're going to go BP spinning sign like that and go select and then it pops us into our own blueprint class over here. Now we're just going to go here where it says add and search for rotator, rotating component. I think they changed it, rotating movement and double click it and it comes in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump over into the event graph and one of the cool things about this is that you can oops you can do this in any number of ways that you want to do this like how you want the sign to rotate you can change the speed of the rotation the whether it's rotating on the x y or z there's a whole bunch of things you can do 
And then there's a whole different ways you could trigger this. You could you could trigger the sign to start spinning off of a trigger, a box trigger. You could have a person press a button. You could have a start event begin play. I mean, there's just a ton of ways you could do this. But I'm just going to have the the thing start rotating at the beginning of the game. So where you see the component over here, we're going to drag it and go set rotating movement. So it's going to start at the very beginning of the game. And I like to put git in there too. I don't know, it just seems nicer to me. Then the other thing we want to do, and this is just because we want some convenience, we're going to right click and search for set visibility. Visibility for here, for the static mesh component, which is our cube. And plug that in there. And then we want to go ahead and create a variable, and we'll just call this toggle visibility. And we want an instance editable. Click that. And then we'll just drag this over here, get it, and plug it into there. And it's going to be off by default. Now all we have to do is more creative, is we want to, with the our text, and you could do this, repeat this for as many signs as you want. With our text 3D actor selected, we're going to drag it up here and make it a child of our BP spinning sign. And now remember the principle is the parent affects the child but the child doesn't affect the parent. So I can move this sign into position and this is where you probably want a slower camera speed. But then what we do is we can click and drag this down and you can use these, I mean I lost control of it. I use these controls when I start getting into tight spots because I just and remember that our pivot points in the center here so we probably want this over the middle of the box and it doesn't matter if it's touching the box or not but basically wherever you want whatever axis you want this sign to spin around that's what you want to center over the middle of the box so and because this can change right I mean this might be different lengths and stuff like that so I can see why it's hard to have it perfect because see I'm a little off the center there but this doesn't take long to line this up and eyeball it in a couple, couple seconds really there we go so now what should happen it'll spin around that axis now I can select the BP box and I can raise it up in the air like that and then when I hit play, it's not spinning and you know why I'm going to get an error? Because I forgot to, on my BP spinner, it's set to static object. That was an oversight on my part. So I have to set static mesh and change it to movable and compile and save. And since we're here, if we go into the viewport here, I'll show you this real fast, and we click on the rotating movement. Right now it's set to 180, which is too fast, I believe. So you control the speed of the rotation right here and just put, type in 90, and it'll go a little bit slower. You can make it go super slow if you want. Now if I hit play, it'll start spinning, see? And there we have our animated sign, just like that. Really not hard to do at all. That might even be too fast. That might be too fast to spin. So we can go back into the blueprint. And we can make these instance edible too, you know, but it's not that hard to change it in here. And, and then we have this control too where we can toggle the visibility on. So you maybe, I don't know, maybe you want to put some sort of geometry underneath the sign and have it spin. But we can toggle the visibility of the cube on. So if we look at it now, you see, it looks like this cool 3D sign spinning. So if I hit escape though, I don't want the cube to be seen right now, but you could put a piece of geometry under there and that might make it look even cooler. So anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.